Praise the Lord, everyone. If we could all stand. Acts 2.39 says, For the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. We all know Acts 2.38. It's been ingrained in us for many years. And Acts 2.39, we teach it, but we don't go over it as much as we do Acts 2.38. And through the years, I've always thought about that verse, especially since having kids. And I thought, these people, and you hear from others, they say, well, that was back then. Because they skipped Acts 2, Acts 2.39. But I know that tonight, it doesn't matter where we're at. It doesn't matter when. We have that promise. So if we could just raise our hands and say, God, thank you for that promise.
There's nothing like the presence of the Lord. I think the saddest verse, the saddest verse in the Bible is when Samson came to realize or didn't realize. The Bible says he wished not. He wished not that the Lord had departed from him. The saddest verse in the Bible is when that presence of God had left the life of Samson. Oh, I, I, I want to say tonight, I don't ever want the Holy Ghost. I don't ever want the presence of God to be, to be out of reach and out of touch for this boy right here. I want to be able to touch him, to feel him, to know that he is close. Hallelujah. If we ever get to the point where we think we can make it without the presence of God, we are seriously deceived. We've got to have the presence of the Holy Ghost. We've got to have the presence of God every service, every day. we got to walk in the presence of Almighty God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Take our needs before God. We've got many needs on the prayer list tonight. We're going to take before the Lord. Of course, the most pressing need is salvation. Salvation. We want our, we want our families to be saved. We want, we want our friends to be saved, our neighbors, our co-workers to be saved. Greatest need of salvation. So we want to pray for revival and God's outpouring of His Spirit upon upon those in need of, of salvation and backsliders. I'm believing God. And I know I've said it. I'm going to keep saying it. I'm going to keep saying it until it happens. I believe backsliders are coming back. I believe God is dealing with backsliders even now. And that many backsliders are feeling the tug of the Spirit of God, especially as close as we are to the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Especially as close as we are to the coming of the Lord. So we want to pray for backsliders. Pray for healing all of our, uh, our seniors, Sister Massey, Sister Duncan, Sister Rhodes, Sister uh, Stevens, Sister Birchfield. Um, we want to pray for all of them. Uh, Sister Charlotte, uh, lift her up in prayer. As I mentioned Sunday, she's having an issue with her, her eye. And we want to pray that God would touch her outside of a miracle. Uh, received some messages today and a call. Uh, Sister Reardon's daughter Liz uh, is in need of a miracle. Uh, she is currently undergoing uh, chemo and in need of God's healing. Uh, it does not seem that the chemo is working. So we need to pray and ask God uh, to minister to Liz and ask the Lord to touch her and to give her strength in Jesus' name. Sister Cindy, uh, we want to pray for her and her cousin, uh, asking God to be with him during his surgery tomorrow. Any unspoken needs, just slip your hand up. Aren't you glad Jesus knows before you ask? Before you ask, he knows. Let's take it to the Lord in prayer. Lord, in your precious name right now, God, I'm so thankful for prayer. I'm so thankful, God, to know, Lord, that when we pray, God, you are there to hear our prayers. And not only hear our prayers, but God, you're there to answer our prayers. So, Lord, we pray tonight. I lift up all of those that are sick among us, that, God, you would minister to them. I pray your hand of healing upon each one. I pray, God, that you would touch them, Lord, by your power. God, we know that by your stripes we are healed. So, Lord, we claim your healing upon them and ask your God to minister to each and every one of them according to your divine will, Lord, we pray. According to your divine will, we pray. We pray, God, today for those in need of answered prayer. Lord, unspoken these hands that were raised up. Lord, we bring it before the Lord tonight and ask your God to minister to them. God, you're able, Lord, tonight to give them a peace in their situation. I speak peace into their storm, God. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I speak peace into their storm. Let your hand be upon them, Lord, we pray. And God, you just, <coughs> God, minister according to your purpose. Lord, we ask it. Lord, I pray you order this service tonight in the Holy Ghost. 
direct every part of it, God, we pray. We pray it in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Give us your presence. You are awesome in this place, Holy Father. You are worthy of our praise. To you our hearts we raise. You are awesome in this place, mighty God. You are prayer line. Could we sing that just a couple more times? Just sing it under the Lord. God, you're awesome. You're awesome, oh Lord. Your presence. Your presence in this place. Oh, Jesus. You are prayed for, would you come tonight? I'd like for some of you men, if you gather around Brother Carl, Brother Carl has an appointment, is it tomorrow? Tomorrow with the surgeon to uh, talk to him about his condition with his back. So we want to lay hands on him tonight. And ask God to touch him in the name of Jesus.
Oh, lift your hands to the Lord and honor the presence of the Holy Ghost. God, we worship you. We magnify you, Lord. We exalt you, oh God. We bless the name of the Most High. There's nobody like you, Jesus. There's nobody like you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. There's nobody like you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. Blessed be your name. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to God, glory to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Brother Jeff, would you take these prayer requests? Pray over them in Jesus' name. Thank you, sir. Ushers, if you make your way up here, you may be seated. God's blessing on our worship and giving.
tell you that tomorrow another person will be here that I think in the last day out here, not there, not in here, not in here, there's things out there, that's good, I like that, Reverend Fell, <clears throat> there's things out there, voices out there that don't need to be in here, no place for it, no place, this is no place for it, Paul said in 1 Corinthians 14.10, he said there are, there may be, so many kinds of voices in the world, and none of them is without signific signification. So, so many voices. When we get up in the morning, when we go through the day, that we have to listen to, and there's times that you just want to go in and into the house and find some peace get tired of hearing them. It weighs on your mind. Peace. As Christians, you know, we listen to a lot of unnecessary worldly and ungodly voices. <clears throat> and we strive every day. If you're a Christian, you strive every day to be in the world, but not a part of the world. We have, we have to be out there. We have to make a living. We have to eat. We have to pay bills. We have to do, you know, <clears throat> and we're around it. Satan, his major weapon is deception. He's our enemy. He's our enemy because we're the people of God. We're God's children. So that makes us his enemy. And he's God's enemy. And he's the world's greatest liar. Paul, that's why Peter said in, in 1 Peter 5 8, he said to be sober, to be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Every time we walk out the door, he's right behind us. When we would do good, evil is always present. He's right there. And there's so many voices out there that support his principles, his ideas. And he will do anything he, will, he can to accomplish his purpose. He's been around a long time. He's got experience. He tried it on Jesus on the mount. He said, I'll give you everything out there bow down and worship me. The people today they listen to people out there today that says, oh, you don't need that Holy Ghost stuff. You don't need water baptism. You don't need that stuff. You don't need to go to church all that time. And they got people believing them. That's why there's empty pews. That's why we have a hard time witnessing to somebody and they, they don't want to believe it. And when Satan can get you to doubt, especially doubt Jesus Christ and his word, he's just standing back laughing at you. He's good at it. He's good at it. 
But the Lord gives us instructions how we can fight back. I mean, if you get in a wrestling ring, and if you want to win, and you don't want to be pummeled all over that ring, you fight back. And that's what we do as Christians. we got to fight back. When you go out there where it's at, where all them voices are at, you got to fight back. And you have to learn how to do it on yourself with the help of the Lord. 1 John 2, 15, 16 says, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. We can't love them things out there in the world. You may want to. Flesh wants to. Flesh wants that out there. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. Voices out there. Voices without. And all three of them, however we, however we look at it when we go out there, will and can affect us if we allow it. If we allow it. It's not just around here. Those three voices, those three categories are all around the world. People are dealing with them all around the world just like we are. We've got two choices in life. We can believe their lies or we can believe in the truth. And if you believe in their lies and stuff, you're going to be living in bondage. You may not think you're in bondage. There's people out there that's cussing and doing that stuff. They're in bondage, but they don't really don't understand it. They don't think they are. Jesus said in John 8, 31 and 32, he said, Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, If ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples, then are ye my disciples indeed. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth will make you free. <clears throat> Our main goal in life is to reject what's out there. call, that call, that voice, that call from out there. It's constant. It's a constant call. It's like the phone's always on and it's always listening. Always calling you. We've got to reject them. And we, you know, <clears throat> if you can't discern what's right, then you're you're leaning towards what's on the outside. We have to learn how to discern right from wrong. James 4.17 says, Therefore to, dis to, to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin. Voices. 1 Thessalonians 5.22 says, Abstain from all appearance of evil. Means we got to, you know, you see the rattlesnake right there, I'm going to go that way. You know, if, if you don't know that that rattlesnake will kill you, if you can't discern that that's a rattlesnake and he'll kill you, you may reach down and try and pat him. It's the same way with what's out there. If you can't discern it, you may, you may just fall right in the crowd. why we need the Holy Ghost inside of us. Voices out there want you to stay out there in that sin. They like that. They like that. He said abstain from all evil. Not just some. All evil. Psalms 1, 1 through 6 says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind driveth away. 
Therefore, the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. It matters what voices we listen to. It matters. Sinners who are walking, standing, and sitting in an ungodly path. And sin. And doing all the practices of sin. There's only one hope for them, for us to give them the truth, the gospel truth. If they would only believe it. Proverbs 23, 23 says, <clears throat> buy the truth and sell it not. Also, wisdom and instruction and understanding. Where do you get that? Where are you going to get all that at? Right here. Right there. And if you don't if you don't know what's going on in here, you'll never be able to fight. You'll never you'll you'll lose the rate, you'll lose the fight out there. Cuz they will they will convince you. We've seen many people, many Christians been drawn away. Well, I don't believe that stuff anymore. I believe that over there. They're listening to the wrong voice. And I guarantee you that voice didn't come from this. There's many, many doctrines man has made up trying to use this. And they're going to pay for it in the end. We, we, we're his truth bearers. We're like the guy in the army We carry his banner, his banner of love. And we do it because we love what we love what's in this book. What this book says, what this book book will take us to and what how it will guide and lead us. I looked it up and it, and it says there's like four thousand religions in our world today. Four thousand. There's only one truth. Y'all can't have the truth. And I guarantee you, there's 4,000 ain't going on all, on this book right here. They're, they're making up their own little pamphlets and books. Voices from without. And they, those out there, they don't want you to hear the truth. They don't, want, they don't even want to hear the truth. Why, when you ask them, you want a Bible study? They may say, yeah, but they never invite you. They don't want to hear it. If they really do, they will be sincere and say, yeah, how about tomorrow night? How about Friday night? If we don't know what's in here, if we don't know the truth, we'll not, we'll not discern deception. deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. They could have been saved if they just for this cause God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe that they should might be damned that they might be damned who believe not the truth but have pleasure in unrighteousness. But we are bound to give thanks Always to God for you, brethren, beloved of the Lord, because God hath from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the Spirit and belief of the truth. We have to know truth and we have to love it more than anything out there. There's nothing out there that can compare to it. Pilate. Pilate looked truth right in the face and said, what is truth? He's standing right in front of truth. And he didn't even know it. He couldn't discern it. Just like people today 
can discern. Now, you may pick up the Bible and read the Bible, but without the Holy Ghost leading God and direct him, is divine. This is going to last. It ain't from down here. Now, you know, there's still time to repent and come back in. This is from above. And I'm here to tell you this morning, I would rather have you quit mooring off the wide roads in the world glad that I'm in that Acts 2.39 for those that are far off. I'm 2,024 years of far off. And I'm glad of that. I'm glad of Acts 2.39, my brother. I'm glad that God turned my life around, changed me 180 degrees. You know, <clears throat> just like he did you. And start listening to the right voices. And when we do that, we'll prosper in innumerable ways if we listen. If we listen to him. You can't listen to the voice of fear. And a lot of people do. You have to listen to the voice of faith. Because there's so many, so many souls at stake on us. Family members, friends we know. People we work with, I mean, they're, they're, they're souls just like we are. And they're headed for, <clears throat> they're, head, they're headed for a place that the Bible says God has enlarged its mouth. And I have room to put them people, people that don't want to hear the truth. God's got a place for them. God loves them, we got to love them. And we got a desire to see them saved. You know, it ain't just about me, it ain't just about you, it's about all the other 8 billion people in the world. God loves everyone that comes in this world. Isaiah 55, 6 and 9 says, 6 through 9 says, Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts and let him return unto the Lord and he will have mercy upon him and to our God for he will abundantly pardon. He's pardoned every one of us. Didn't need president to pardon you. You needed Jesus to pardon you. Amen. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. Sometimes we try to think a little higher, but we'll never get to that point. We ask questions, and one day we'll find out because he'll reveal it to us in, in the last days. He says, for as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. That's the voice that we need to listen to, his voice. Saint and sinner alike. When we witness, we're using his voice try and save them, to try and win them, to try and convince them that they're living, living in an ungodly world. It matters. It matters what voice we listen to. It matters. Deuteronomy 30, 19, 20 says, I call heaven and earth to record, record this day against you, that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life that both thou and thy seed may live. <clears throat> if I get it right, if I do it right, the book right, it'll save my seed, my kids, my grandkids, my great-grandkids. If I live long enough, great-great-great-grandkids. Who knows? a promise. 
way back in Isaiah or Deuteronomy. That thou mayest love the Lord thy God and that thou may obey his voice. And that thou mayest cleave unto him for he is thy life and thy length of days. That thou mayest dwell in the land which the Lord swear unto thy fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, to give them. He'll give us the desires of our heart. But we can't be, the Bible says a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. We can't, we can't fellowship with the world and then come in here. We can't do it. We can't serve God and mammon, the Bible says. The Bible says God is the same yesterday. Today and forever. It was like that back then. It was like that today. And it's going to be like that in the future. <laughs> Only by listening to his voice. And this is his voice. When you pick this up, you, he's speaking to you. He, he's speaking to us. We learn it. We pass it on. We become teachers using his voice. That in John 10, 1 through 5, he said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but cometh up some other way, the same as a thief and a robber. But he that entereth by the door is a shepherd of the sheep. To him the porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice. And he calleth his own sheep by name, and leadeth them out. And when he putteth forth his own sheep, he goeth before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his, know his voice. I know his voice. If you read this and, and, and read it constantly, you know his voice. And a stranger will they not follow, but will flee from him, for they know not the voice of strangers. That world out there is our stranger, full of strangers, with a lot of different voices. I uh, got here from church a little while. <clears throat> Let me read this, and I'll finish the story. We all want we all, one more. We all want to see our family saved. We want to see friends saved, loved ones saved. I lived just 25 years ago in uh, 1998, <clears throat> and I still feel the same today. I like to see all my family saved, but it says, if soft words would save you, I would speak to you the softest words the world could offer. If a song would sway your heart to accept Jesus, I would certainly want to be a singer. If I could run the spiritual race for your soul, I would be a marathon runner. If a tear would convince you to surrender to his love, I pray that I pray for many tears to fall. Won't you yield to his drawing power and heed his loving call? Let him turn your grief to joy, your pain to peace, and your mind to no freedom. Look, my brother, and don't don't you see it just ahead, what we have heard about and what we have read. All the angels <clears throat> dressed in white, patiently waiting to step aside. It's our eternal home, and with them and Jesus, we go to abide. I'll speak to you, brethren, in a new language and a new song, one that's been written by Jesus, and to only us does it belong. 
We are soon to become a royal priesthood and heirs to our king. While the earth's foundation is being shaken, to him our praises will ring. We walk with Jesus, we stood upon his word, and we run the race. We'll soon receive eternal peace, and our souls will forever look upon his face. Glory and honor to him we will give, for the blood he shed upon Calvary's hill. With so much love for you and I, he gave his life. Pay the bill. <clears throat> An eternity dwell to dwell in his marvelous light, never more to be out of his sight. This is why we are encouraged to endure until the end and fight a good fight. All the questions we have pondered, all and all mysteries he will then reveal. His children, his bride, his purchased possession he'll claim. Satan can no, no longer steal. We can make it. We can win. Rest assured our new home will be around Jesus' throne. The world needs to awaken, listen, and begin to worship Jesus and him alone. If Jesus has knocked on the door of your life and for some reason you continue to wait, I must warn you, you're soon to be awakened, and I'm afraid it will be too late. To enter heaven's portal with all his beauty so grand can only be accomplished by having the right key in your hand. <clears throat> you repent, be baptized in Jesus' name and Holy Ghost filled. Makes all the angels, angels in heaven excited and thrilled. Make every day you live as though you are rapture ready and await your future pass. We'll all sit down at the marriage feast and shout, we made it at last. <clears throat> yeah. it's, it's every Christian's desire to, be, to, make, to make it around that throne. But there's, there's a third thing here that says, thought. Anyway, back at the farm. I talked to you a little bit ago about senior moment, didn't I? <laughs> Got me back. Anyway, soon to come. We ain't got time to fool around. We got, we got, we got, the Bible says we try to win souls and pull them from the fire. So somebody's pulled us from the fire. They got us on the right track. And that's, that's what I hope uh, we see in the future is, is our loved ones coming to church, giving their lives to Christ, and living a holy, righteous life. The importance of that message, I don't think I could overemphasize how important it is. Be careful what voices you listen to. The Bible says, believe not every spirit. Believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they be of God. Because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Believe not every spirit. You gotta be careful what voices you're listening to. And we live in a world that is full of false voices, false doctrines, false preachers. You, let me tell you something, you cannot overcome something if you continue 
to entertain its voice. You can't overcome fear if you continue to listen to the voice of fear. You can't overcome depression if you continue to listen to the voice of depression. You can't overcome sin if you continue to listen to the voice of sin. You've got to be careful what voices you listen to. And you've got to be careful what spiritual voices you listen to. Not every TV preacher is of God. Well, they sound like the truth. Well, every lie has an ounce of truth in it. So not every TV preacher is, is preaching truth to you. And you don't need, and, and if they're not preaching truth, they're preaching false doctrine. That makes them a false prophet. Thank you for leaving that part to me, Brother Holman. I'll do some pastoring right now. But it's the truth. It's the truth. We've got to be careful what voices we listen to. One of the things that I pray, and maybe this will help you, one of the things that I pray, I ask, <coughs> I ask God, I, want, I say, God, filter everything that goes in and out of my mind through your word. Filter everything that goes in and out of my heart through your righteousness. So that not everything, I don't want to be a dumping ground for all of, all of, all of the devil's stuff. I, I, don't, I don't want all the devil's stuff dumped in my spirit. You got to guard your heart with all diligence. You got to guard your heart. You got to guard what you see. Lord, set no wicked thing before mine eyes. You got to guard what you hear. Because what you see and what you hear goes in here. So you got to filter that out and not allow all that stuff that the enemy will pile in you. Not let that get in your life. Stand with me tonight. Let's sing.